Lee Homer. I do got to I do okay. got to add the. So uh, Lee, Lee, that red light. Red light. Oh. Good morning. Good morning, Just everybody. Just in time. Hi, pickles. Welcome to the bear cave. Okay. Hi, pickles. So you're out now. I oh. It's okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Bear Cave. Rough morning at my house. Uh, I'll let you take over. So, I'm gonna it. Rusty just got here. Good morning, Rusty. Good morning. How are you? All right, buddy. How about you? <laughs> Been busy. I got up late um, and was scurrying around and just about strangled the wife and the kid cub, but that's okay. So, we had planned on doing this outside, but yeah. It didn't happen. So we're going to do it in here because it's already set up. So hope you all enjoy the new camera angle. We're playing around with some stuff. Um, it makes you look taller. <laughs> uh, it's like that illusion in the house. Like when you stay on one. an illusion. He is tall. Okay, yeah. But like it looks. Uh, so who we got in? We got. Uh, Tom, you got pickles, and you got. Willing and chilling with Mojo. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Mojo. Good luck on the move. He's getting ready to move houses. Okay. Good so, luck. good luck with that, buddy. I don't envy that. No. So, he's watching the train wreck before he goes to his house. Yes. <laughs> nice. Nice. That's what I do. Right? So, let's, let's just kick this off like I got to get it heated up. Y'all remember this big 20-quart Dutch oven that we, uh, I don't have a coffee cup for you. But there's coffee ready. That's fine. Uh, if you want to get him a cup. Yeah. Um, so anyway, we got this this Tech Sport 20 quart Dutch oven that we seasoned last week. Um, it was kind of a bit of a train wreck. You know, smoked out quite a bit, get burning the wax off. But uh, got most of it done on the live. It looked like Cheech and Chong billowing underneath the garage <laughs> door. So what I did. Is, I feel like this is the best option today. Thank you. What I did is I ended up putting it in the oven. Um, it did fit. I was surprised. It did not fit on the rack. I had to like angle it up on the rack, but I did get it in there. Um, and then I had to do the bottom, the bowl, and then the top separate. So I ended up doing three rounds. Um, three rounds on on both the top and then or the bottom. And then pulled it out and set it aside. The next day, I did three rounds on the lid. So it does fit a 14-inch Weber kettle cook, uh, Smoky Joe cook rate. Sits right down in there as a trivet. So we will be utilizing this at some point. Just not sure when yet, which is all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get the fire lit. Um, What's up? Tom said I was... Channeling my inner Charlie last night, I thought some crumb cake, Coke beer, crumb Coke, oh, crumb cake beer. Crumb cake beer? Yeah, uh, he said apparently it wasn't good. I don't know that I've heard of it. I've oh. got apple crumb cake coffee cake cups for my Keurig at home. Oh, crumb cake. Okay, 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 I'm with you. I, I was like left field it didn't register at all oh, okay I, I was not thinking that at all so but we'll get some heat on this um so as you can see the seasoning went pretty well we had a little bit of um, still had a little bit of a pool in here and when i scraped it off so it's a little it's got a coat on it but it's only a light coat right here um, but otherwise it looks pretty good so uh We'll get this fired up and ready to roll. I have not cooked any yet. So typically what they tell you with a new piece of iron is your first cook should be bacon or something fatty that has a lot of grease in it. Um, basically because you're you're building on that foundation that you already just put in there. So your, your oils, what you're doing is you're trying to take it above the smoke point. So each oil has a, a temperature where it just starts to, for lack of a better term, burn. So that burn, the carbonization, is what gets down in there and makes your seasoning. 
So once you do that, if you think about your skin and putting sunscreen on, you know, you got to put layers and layers and layers on which to you protect should, it. Which you should be thinking about a lot now. Yes. And, <laughs> and I do. Um, so we've got three layers on right now, but now we're getting ready to basically like go to the beach. We're going to take it outside and we're going to cook in it and we're going to really, really hammer it, hammer some, put it to use. So what we're going to do is I got some bacon, we'll cut in half, and I got some uh, hatch green chilies. Which that looks really good. I got these at Sam's Club. They're hatch green chili cheddar sausages. So what's hatch? Hatch. It's, hatch. Hatch. it's a type of chili. Yeah. Okay. It's a green chili. Uh, uh, that's what Kit Rollins uses a lot and got me into them, the little can. Okay. And, uh, and I really like it. Um, they had another kind that I got, and we liked those. And I was going to do a video on that, but my lazy butt just hasn't done Oh, anything. were those ones you had the other day? The, yeah, the, the cheddar ones. Cheddar and what, jalapeno? I think it's ch cheddar jalapeno. Good, because I was like, I tasted that jalapeno. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. I liked it. So, but before we get too far involved, cheers. Cheers. Happy Sunday. Cheers. Ain't nothing in Rusty's cup. Oh, there is. Mm-hmm. So. I didn't know you poured it, and I was like, ain't nothing in his cup. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I, like, I got a feeling the coffee's going to be flowing today, because, man, we were out late last yep. night. Yep. Um, so I had a buddy come in in town. His son was doing a football camp yesterday, and I hadn't seen this guy. I mean, we... We've been friends for 25 years or better. And, uh, from Ohio. Yep. Oh. Yep. He moved, they moved to Raleigh shortly after we moved down here. So he came from Raleigh to Rock Hill for a football Johnny game. Johnny Mags yep. is wow. in yep. What's up, Jay Mags? Um, so they were, they were in town and, uh, after the camp, he called me and said, we're going to take a nap, get cleaned up and then we'll meet up for dinner. So about, 4 30 ish we met up we had dinner and um i had he had him and the wife had beers and i had some non-alcoholic heinekens and uh just shooting the breeze chewing the fat and reminiscing and next thing you know the kids are like y'all been here six hours can we leave <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was good it was great uh to see we had fun and and he cleared something up for me oh. and I, i'm still baffled because so when we were running around i mean 20 years ago right and i've been holding on to this like anxiety and this um like i feel bad i felt bad about this for 20 years or better and well better than 20 years but i i don't i, I don't but anyway, he cleared it up for me. So his dad was, um, he, he was in Texas for a good time and he learned how to cook brisket. Now I got, I got his recipe last night, finally. So I'll be doing that. But, um, he had, he had this smoker and the way that I envisioned that this, this thing went is not at all what happened. Now, for 20 years, I've had anxiety about this, and I've had, you know, bouts of depression over. I mean, like, it's really affected me. And so what had happened was we were partaking in in, um, in uh, liquid Supermans, and, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, we were Stone Cold Steve Austin before Stone Cold was cool. Uh, you know, the... the, the but anyway, so we were, we were, I was, I don't, I don't remember everything, but I know that we had steaks and we were going to cook steaks. And this was before I learned how to cook. I was on a gas grill at this point. And he got us a, you know, his dad has this offset smoker. Me not knowing what I was doing at the time and being completely obliterated was dumping lighter fluid all over everything and getting the flare-ups and all this. 
So our steaks were rare and charcoal. And, you know, so I, I vaguely remember that. I, I just remember cutting into it and the juice is all falling out. And they're like, how is it charcoal on the outside and raw, raw on the inside? I don't know. But anyway, so the, the part that, that bothered me, like he made fun of me for that because I didn't know what I was doing. And then he's like, now you're a barbecue judge. So what the hell happened? <laughs> so anyway, the part that bothered me was <laughs> dad come in the next day, <laughs> opened his grill and smelled lighter fluid and was furious, was mad. So my buddy, he's, his dad was like, hey, you got to get out there and get that smell out. So he had to go out there with a wire brush and scrubby pads Thank and you. clean the whole thing down to bare metal. Yeah. Well, and, and here's the part that, that I don't, I don't know why I thought this, but I thought, like, I have a vision of a brick smoker that had, it was like basically a chimney, but it had the fireplace at the bottom, like the spot where you would light your little fire, and then about yay high up was the cook grate, and the, the fireplace would come up, and then it would angle in because your bricks came in, and that's what held your cook grate, and then it was blocked in and chimney up about 10 feet high, eight to 10 feet high. And he goes, dude, there was never a brick chimney in our house. I was like, yes, that's this. And then when your dad got mad, you had to clean it out. He gave you a little wire toothbrush, like a little wire brush. It's like a toothbrush. And you had to scrub the brick. He goes, no. I said, yeah. I said, no, no. He goes, it was this smoker. And he showed me a picture and he says, but it was longer because his dad had built built the one, and then he made a smaller version for travel that would all compact into basically like a briefcase. And it's a pretty sweet little deal, but I was com completely lost. I was like, well, no, there's this brick smoker. And, he, I mean, we went on all night long about that never happened. So he goes, how many other places did you screw up steaks at? <laughs> I don't know. I, I really, so I'm completely baffled. And, and I, I, maybe it's a vision of a grill that I'm, that a, a smoker that I want to build. I don't know. But completely lost. Completely lost. I have no idea. Tom said, sounds like Lee was cooking like Charlie. Back then? Yes. Back then, I mean, I was in my early 20s and. I mean, barbecue was high heat, hot dogs and hamburgers, chicken breasts, marinated in Italian dressing. dressing. That was it. So, um, yeah, we're getting there. You want to cut the bacon in half? I know that us kids had fun because we all, we got there and then they were like, oh, it's going to be like a 30 minute wait. So me and Reagan, who's beside me, and his son we all went outside we talked and then we went to go eat and then we looked at each other like yep yeah, let's go we we ran out and like went to go have some fun yeah look at beating up oh huh? look at that beating up she's ready to go so yeah so it was it was kind of an interesting, interesting oftentimes you can Feel terrible for years over something no one remembers. That came from pickles. Yeah, I, I mean, and, and I don't know. I mean, I have felt bad and I've held this anxiety and all this, like, holy shit, like I feel bad. And I, it's 20 years ago and I, it shouldn't bother me now. I'm just dropped in there. Ooh, yeah. And it shouldn't bother you know, me. Get out of the in. What's up, Mike? So I shouldn't feel bad anymore, but you want both of them done? Yeah. But I, I, I did, and I was carrying that, and um, and there was a lot of times where I wouldn't call him and talk to him because I knew he always reminded me about it. He always, hey, you remember that? You know, and you know, and now I'm cooking, and I've learned a lot of, of barbecue and grilling skills. 
and it's completely different than what I was doing then. And he's like, hey, you remember that? And now you're a barbecue judge? Remember when I had to clean this grill? And I was like, man. But in my head, it wasn't a stainless offset grill. There's a... It wasn't a, uh, uh, an offset grill, a steel grill. It was a, a, brick pit. a brick pit. So where this all came from, I have no idea. Completely baffled. I was up a little bit late last night trying to figure this out because no clue. Absolutely no clue what in the world was I, I was thinking. And I don't remember most of the night. So... I mean, he's telling me, don't don't you remember this? And I was like, no. Like, I don't remember young and dumb. But anyway, that happened. It's all good. Um, but it was great to catch up with an old buddy. Um, so we're making plans to try to get, get over that way to Raleigh and, and uh, hang out some more. Uh, his son's playing football. They're, they were at a football camp, you know, from the sausage whenever. They were at a football camp, so his son's looking, trying to get it out there in front of uh, recruiters and stuff, so uh, I don't know how we're going to swing it, but we're going to try to get out there for a Friday night Friday night game. Raleigh's like a three and a half hour ride, so four hour ride. So we'll have to figure that out. But, uh, People said, just don't kill anyone. For some reason, they never get over that. True, but you don't have to hear them complain unless they're visiting you in the middle of the night. And then Tom said, Lee sounds like me. Doesn't even remember what he did two hours ago. You have no idea how true that is. I mean, like I was telling Rusty the other day, I walked out to cut grass. I got a sidetrack going from... The kitchen right here to the, the lawnmower right there. 15, 20 feet, 25 feet. Completely forgot what I was doing. Two days later, I still ain't cut. Three days later, I still ain't cut grass. And I got, we got some rain and I got weeds sprout up by yay high in the front yard. But uh, I don't know. I don't know, but it was great catching up with my buddy, and that's that's what matters. Um, so last night, because you were off with your friend, I decided I was going to go ahead and go to the auction by myself. So I went out there. They had six sellers last night. I mean, they, they were full. Oh wow! And uh, I mean, having a good old time. And I get about nine thirty or so. I get a phone call. Camera was in a wreck. Uh oh, she was on her way home from a friend's house. She was on uh, the corner of Mount Gallon and Selene, and she was making the turn right there at uh, McDonald's, and somebody pulled out in front of her and hit her. And, well, actually, pulled out in front of her and she hit them. But um, it was their fault. Her airbag deployed, and I mean, the, the car is pretty much totaled. Yep, lost that airbag deployed. Right. And so. Teresa was babysitting her best friend's son because it was her and her husband were going out for an anniversary dinner. So Teresa went over to their house to play with Aiden and, and keep, you know, and watch him while they were out. And she started showing him things on her phone. I think, God, he's probably, I don't even know how old he is, seven years old or so, maybe. Anyway, she was showing him things on, his, on her phone, and then somehow she got locked out of her phone. And I said, well, you couldn't have changed your password because you got to do that twice. And there's no way that this boy's, if he, because you were right there with him and you should have seen that. She did something and locked herself out of the phone. And every time she would put in her, her password, it would say incorrect. First time is, you know, wait 60 seconds. Then it was wait yeah. two minutes. Well, by, by one o'clock this Just morning. Terry. By one o'clock this morning, it was saying wait eight hours before she could try again. So I showed her how to log into iCloud on my computer and went to reset her phone like that and you know, try and re you know, redo her password. She didn't know, reckon, remember her 
um, iCloud password. Imagine and that. then she didn't have her. I mean, I, I'm terrible. I, I've got an iPod that I haven't been in in 10 years. And, but I mean, it was just a. I spent over an hour and finally got her phone to to reset everything and then download her last backup from iCloud, which was yesterday. I said, well, at least you do have your backup set up correctly. And so I spent about an hour this morning getting that done for her and got her phone all, you know, back to ready to go. But she was calling me from <coughs> Keith, the husband of her friend. She was at his house. She had his phone and texted me and her message. Oh, God, let me read it because she didn't understand why. Whenever I called, I was trying to figure out what was going on, why I was upset or anxious. And oh, she like said, memory loss is a wonderful she thing. She said, this is Keith's phone. I'm calling you. Pick up Teresa. And so I'm thinking, why do I got to go pick up Teresa? What happened? So I'm trying to call Teresa. Her phone's not working. And so we go back and forth. Then I get, hello, pick up. Something is wrong with my phone. And then Rusty, and I'm like, I don't understand what's going on. And I didn't recognize the number, but it said this is Keith's phone. So finally I called it back, and her message, even though this is a text, it didn't. she didn't mean it the way it came across. Said, this is Keith's phone. She should have wrote, period. I'm calling you. She didn't say this is Teresa calling you from Keith's phone. But she said, this is Keith's phone. I'm calling you pick up Teresa and so but your wife's not grammar in essence she was giving me three different complete sentences here but it was all ran together and I'm like I gotta go pick up Teresa I don't you none of us use periods in this house You're, Teresa's not in this house none of us she's 50 years old she knows the proper use of grammar okay but it's but anyway I mean do? that made me nervous and then finally Tommy called me and he said you know we're on our way um tamara was just in an accident she's okay but we're on our way to right now you know to the to the wreck and so I, i'm sitting here in the auction house and so i tell chris i said man i said look my daughter was just in a wreck i gotta go so i cashed out real quick and they still had two sellers to go and then i'm halfway home and uh well ha halfway between the auction house and my house and i call Tommy back and I said, okay, so you said she's okay. I said, do you know anything at all? I said, do I need to go right there? I said, do y'all have her? Are y'all bringing her home? Is she, is her car drivable? And I was going through all these questions and they said, well, we're almost there. Um, we're just going to pick her up and bring her home because she can't drive the car. She's not going to the hospital. So instead of going to the accident site, I went on home and then a few minutes later they came in but her car is total. So wait a minute. You were in the auction totaled. by yourself. Yeah. And you're driving at night in the dark. Yeah. On top of being stressed. And now, <laughs> and now your daughter's in a car accident. And you're driving at night in the dark by yourself. Yeah. And you're going to get on your wife about the use of grammar. <laughs> I didn't have a problem. I could see I was driving slower than the speed limit. This, this, this sounds like a case of somebody having diarrhea and asking you to pull their finger. <laughs> like, nothing good could come out of this. I didn't hit nobody on a bicycle. I, you know what time. I mean? I mean, it's, it's just one of those that nothing good could come out of. When I got home, they came in and then showed me the pictures and all. That is just a recipe for disaster. You know that, right? But it worked out fine. I mean, I normally don't drive at night. You know that. I know, but, but that's, that's even more house reason. is only 10 minutes away. Most accidents happen close to the house. One mile away from your house. Yep. I just put it out there, <laughs> you know. Uh, but now they're trying to figure out because, you know, Sean's car, he, they just got everything replaced yesterday. He spent the whole day at his dad's house in the garage. And his car is ready to go. So tomorrow, when DMV is open, they're supposed to get all the taxes and stuff paid up and the car's on the road. And I said, well, that's good because now Tamara's got to drive my truck because she don't have a vehicle. As I said, at least until she calls the insurance company of the other guy and they arrange You're going to have to get a step ladder for her to get in. <laughs> and they got sure to have to arrange a rental car and i said no you got a lot of stuff you got to do tomorrow i said 
you probably need to go ahead and call in to work. I said, because you were going to be busy all day. But they're going through that now. But at least you know, she had a scratch on her thumb from where the airbag cover flew off. It flew past her hand and scraped her thumb. And so she was bleeding a little bit there. And then she has the seatbelt bruises that came across her chest whenever she hit. But the paramedics checked her out, had her in the ambulance and all, and they wrapped her hand. When she came home, I mean, for a little scratch on the thumb, her whole hand was wrapped up, looked like a boxing mitt. I'm like, you don't need to use five feet of gauze and bandage for a little cut. I said, put a band-aid on it. If they would have put just a band-aid on it, and then you get the bill, and you're like, why didn't they wrap it up more? <laughs> you know? So. Um, so, Tom said, I use password managers. I don't even know most of my passwords these days. I just copy and paste. Mike said, one mile away from my house, I need to move. People said, most accidents happen in your house. That's why I live at my neighbor's house. <laughs> oh, Charlie, huh? Now it's coming out. You get a freak with the neighbor. Ooh. To go next door so there's that guy on TikTok that has the, the Karen next door. And he's like, his whole pitch is is F Karen. And so he's like, this lady next door, you won't believe this. And she's always he's always like talking about how she's called the cops on him because of his 12 year old, 13 year old son's buying home for an hour after school by himself. Or the kid was out mowing grass and a, and something hit the a pine cone hit the fence and so she's calling the cops. Wow. Like so I wonder, Charlie, is this your neighbor? Well it makes sense. So he he can pass the thirteen year old. No, not with his beard. Well uh, speaking of beard kids like uh, I go in for a haircut today in a beard trim. Finally get this wild wiry stuff tamed. Okay, well, you can't, like, take it off. It's almost weird. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've never had a full beard until this. this is, and it's been 12, 15 months now, because I started this Christmas of 2021. So it's, it's only been a little over a year, and I have yet to cut my, trim my beard. So this is all, that's why it's so wild and stuff. But my, we're going to Texas the week of June the 3rd with my daughter, let's visit my um, wife's sister. And she told me she wanted me to get cut and then get trimmed up before we go on the trip. And I said, I am not getting trimmed up and, and nice and, and you know, looking good to go see your sister. Well, I think she might cut, she meant. <laughs> hey, yo, dad. <laughs> see, see her they cut that on camera. Seeing her sister. Has nothing to do with that either. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's, it's gonna feel good getting this tame because I know how wild it is. But I'm 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 really excited about that. We're gonna, Cub, Cub and I are gonna go get stuff and we're gonna die mine. Yeah. Yep. Cub so, was telling me that because it's May is melanoma awareness month. Yep. Mom has her melanoma on my hair. I'm not allowed to have mine because I graduate in May. So we're dying dad's beard black. Okay, yeah. What does graduation in May have to do with you? Because mom's not gonna let me because I graduate in May. And she just got her hair done not too long ago. So it's bright red. I so she's got all kinds of money into it right now. You might as well enjoy oh, it. And okay. then and if she like goes and does it again. I'm mm -hmm. just wondering what's the correlation of graduation <clears throat> and hair color. Because well, mom, this is for mom doesn't want me yeah. to have black okay. hair. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're gonna be dying it. We're, we're well, my brother dyed his hair green to match the color of his car. <laughs> the couple hey, said no. I can get this. Was it just for men and it brushes in or right. something? Yeah. I don't know. I've never done. We're it. gonna go to Sally's Beauty Supply. Okay, you're going. I'm not. I will go to Sally's and get you what you need because Sally's is where you have you get it. So oh, anyway, you can get just for men at Walmart. Yeah, but Sally's, I discount and it's cheaper. There's no way it's cheaper at a hair beauty supply yeah, store it is. than a $5 bottle of just for do men we, at Walmart. Do we go? Do y'all men go into do Sally's? Do we go to the Sally's? No, but I go to Walmart. So <laughs> how often do you look at hair care products? Not very often. Okay, okay then. 
So that's the point. Let let us dye you hair, people. The, you can see they do do the hair. Let them go. She did this herself. She a pro. Well, she maybe I need to lay back in the chair and put one of your ribbon molds on my beard and have you dyed just a, a black ribbon in my beard. Okay. Wonder how that would work. You, can, you can ask her to do that. I don't know how that how that would work. Be like laying it on but, the uh, biscuit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so... Oh, wait, hold on. You can't continue that story yet. You gotta catch up. Oh, okay. Catch up, catch up. I'm trying. Sorry. So, Sorry, Chad. Okay, so Tom said, have your neighbors been in their panic room this whole time? Oh. Mike said, so you're, so you're, you're, so you're the one leaving the empty milk carton in the fridge? People <laughs> say, haha. No, I only know my neighbors enough to say hi. That's about it. I should be your neighbor, Charlie. You hear banging in the middle of the night and Chuck's bringing 55 gallon drums to me, burying them in the backyard. That's a wholesome activity. I can't get behind Tom. No, that I can't get behind Tom. Is your middle name Dexter? That's Tom and Pickles are just like me. <clears throat> going back and forth. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And it smells good. So, so because it's May's melanoma month, I'm going to do um, some sort of ribbon cooks and we can make pretzels i did i did a, a, a test run because my wife has told me i can't get any special molds or cookie cutters or anything like that but i already got this one and i don't know how well it'll show up let me set it in here i bet his name is like Declan. but it looks like this, and it's a He's cookie Irish. cutter, and it's got the centerpiece, so I don't like that, that's but that's it. Okay, so what I did is I had a brisket <laughs> flat that I was cook, going to cook because the wife, I found it on sale, and the wife loves brisket flat. I got it on markdown. It was like 5.2 pounds for like 14 or 15, 16 bucks. So I laid this on top of it and then seasoned and I was hoping, I couldn't get it to pop in there, so I should have trimmed it and let the set down in there. And I didn't, and I should have. But I set it on top, and I seasoned it, and I thought, well, if I pull this off, then I'll have a little ribbon around there, right? And, uh, well, and then I, I set it on the cooker and, and cooked it, and when I, it shrank up, and then when I pulled it off, there was barely, barely a ribbon. So I got some work to do with this one. But I, I now know things to do. So then what I did is I took a foil tater pan, a little drip pan, um, and I traced it out of the on the bottom, took some scissors and cut it out. And then I took this candy dish. It, it was a, I want to say candy dish. It was a thing that my brother-in-law gets um, from his work every Christmas, they get a big tin of, of nuts oh. and candy nuts and stuff like that. <laughs> so I took and I ran a can opener, a hand can opener around the bottom and cut out the circle and then traced out my ribbon. This is the, the foil pan. And then traced out the ribbon onto that and cut it out with 10 cents. <laughs> So now I have five of these. Now I have five of these. Okay, Dad. So the idea then is I'm going to drill a hole in the top and then one on each side. So when I set it down on whatever I'm cooking, I can put a toothpick in there and hold that on there. So when I cook it, then hopefully that'll stay on there. Let me know what you think. Will it work? Tom said Lee's wife told him, question mark. He needs to do what I did. My wife would tell me what I what to do. I go behind her back and do what I wanted anyways. See, my wife gives me um, powerful suggestions. And because my brain scrambled, I have to think about it a long time. And from the time that she tells me, I, I, I start the clock at six years. That was I was told that was the magical number. That once they give you a, a, a list of things they want done, you have six years from that date to get it done. It reminds me of that meme that you see all over Facebook all the time. You know, when I 
uh, when you ask me to do something, I will. Like, you don't have to remind me every six months. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then it said, Pickle said, Tom hides toxic waste for a side hustle. Mike said, Lee, I get the last word in my house on everything, period. It's always yes to you, but it's the last word. And I then do. Tom said, it's bales of Troxen. Troxen. I bet Charlie knows what that is. I think it's a drug. Troxen. T-R-I-O-X-I-N. Trioxin. Trioxin. I think it's a drug. Could be. Oh, this is good. This is good. This is pretty good. <laughs> Well, he has bales of it, so he might be a chemist. But yeah, so I got these these ribbons, and I'm gonna play around with it. And I'm thinking that you know, like maybe I can do a smash burger type deal and set it on top, like down, and then put the burger on it, smash down, and hopefully it'll give me something. Yeah, something. To play I don't on. know. Zombiepedia. Toxin is the Walking Dead. No, it's not. It's that's it. that's not what that means. Oh. <laughs> So, but the the brisket flat turned out wonderful. Uh, did it on our yeah. Trucks, trucks. I got. I did shoot a video. That's what it said. What I didn't do yesterday. I was I was a bad YouTuber because I'm still an amateur. We did a competition yesterday. We went Friday night. There was anything but. And it would have been a perfect opportunity to video. It would. Kind of walking around that 16 teams doing whatever, anything but pork is what it is. And uh, we walked around. We saw some friends, some new teams, um, tried some of their, you know, and what the anything but is, is it's uh, you go in, you buy a ticket for a dollar, and then you walk around to each campsite. And you give them a ticket, they give you a sample. Thank and you. it's whatever they want. I mean, we had cream corn, we had shrimp creole, chicken wings. Yeah. I didn't know what creole was. Peach cobbler. Yep. Peach cobbler. That was really good. Um, barbecue chicken pizza. Homemade andouille sausage, which yep. I really like. The smoked kielbasa. Um, pasta salad. Chop suey. Yeah, barbecue, barbecue chop, chop suey. suey. Our friend Roger made that. Interesting, very interesting. He was um, like, oh, let me try it. And Mike said he's going zombie apocalypse. Tom said Charlie's a horror movie fan. He better know. Pickle said trioxin is the zombie chemical. Does do kimchi instead. After you eat it, you can launch your own fragrance line. Oh, you know, I've never, I've never tried kimchi. Yeah, I, I don't like it. I tried it back like whenever I was in the time. Army at Fort Jackson, right off the uh, gate three. There's a place, and everybody always bragged about how good their kimchi was. What and, is kimchi? I mean, I've tried it probably two or three times because they, they all said, Oh, you, you might, you know, might have had some, but you haven't had it oh, like this, or they didn't make it like this. And yeah, I just cannot get. I can't do it. I just don't you know, that's it. always one thing is, is everybody says, oh, I don't like this. I don't like that. But there's always that when well, you ever had mine. Right. And I, I've said that before, but then I'm, I, I have to, like, remind myself that, you know, not everybody's there. Like, you're a strong opinionated. If you're, if you're like, I had this once and I didn't like it. Well, I cook it completely different because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So you might like it because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> You know it's good since Rusty doesn't like it. That's that came from pickles. <laughs> you gotta laugh. Okay, I laughed too hard. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, there's. I mean, I got a lot of stuff that I don't like. It's okay. The, the Stay one, strong. The one chicken wings we had. How many? They had. Uh, it was a chili lime. Mm -hmm. I didn't get chili and I didn't get lime. So I, I sure don't. Did. So I said, "Oh, you'll like. It's okay." Cause he's like, "Oh, it's got lime." Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, "You don't even taste the lime. Like it wasn't a prominent taste to me." But because he knew that, as soon as he took a bite, yep, God, and I was like, "Come on, Rand, really?" It wasn't. I did not act like that. 
but I could definitely, I could see their taste, the, the lime and the citrus notes. I mean, I just, I did not care for it. It's the good stuff, man. Spicy fermented, 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 fermented. tastiness. Yeah, man. we had a couple guys on base that would actually would uh, put it in the glass jars and they would um, actually bury it at their house and bring it in the post and share it with everybody. Trying to make their own homemade kimchi. Yeah, I've not tried it. Um, coleslaw with the kick. That's what Mike said. I'm going to have to try it. doesn't like coleslaw. I do like slaw. So, Mike, if you guys have not checked now. out um, Keterific Journey, did boiled eggs. Okay, well, we're right. No, but he did it like a TikTok video that where you tap the bottom. Right. And, and it's supposed to make it easy. For and it pops. And then once you boil them, you pull them out and then you, you ice bath them. And then he just he started pulling it apart, stuck a spoon up in there, and it popped right out. Oh, that's what I do. I'm going to have to try that because, I I mean, when I, when I cook eggs like that, it is... I mean, there's craters. Have you have y'all seen that those videos on TikTok where they take the egg and they like they're holding it, but they're taking like this itty bitty like tweezers and they're ripping it the skin off. Yeah. I don't understand how they can do that. Because they have the membrane on there, and it like are the the farm fresh eggs or the, the fresh eggs they have a thicker membrane. So Tom said Rusty needs to try ball loot. What is that? Reagan's looking it up. Ball loot is a hundred year old egg. Oh, oh, okay. No, it's, the, it's the one that has like the chicken in it. Yeah. It's a partially, ooh, a partially fertilized egg. I didn't egg. even season this. And you're like, is it too spicy? No, it's just hot. And you bite it, and it's got um, partially formed um, fetus fetus in it. With the, it's just a really popular dish over in Thailand and stuff like that. <laughs> you were dismissed. There's the door. You were dismissed with that comment. I couldn't even make myself try that. I yeah. think we could just blindfold you and try. I'm not That's putting not anything enough. in my mouth if I'm blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> Close your eye. <laughs> what would be the difference? <laughs> Tom said, Balut is a fermented, fertilized egg. I ain't eating nothing older than me. That came from Mike. I mean, technically, it's not older than me because the fetus. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about that one. I mean, you're not wrong. And it's amazing. Now y'all made me forget It's like a, a, a street food of, over in. Taiwan and, and the, the Orient places like that. You just go up and down the street food vendors, and they've got all kinds of places lined up with the with the. Ugh. Can't imagine. I'm 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 having balance problems right now, Dad. What do you? Will you get the uh, bacon grease? No, the funnel. I need a coffee filter. Okay. This, this bad boy is going to be hot. This is not what we talked about we were going to be doing this morning. <laughs> well, I know. I so so we were talking and I had this brainstorm the other day when I was supposed to be cutting grass and got sidetracked walking to the mower that I was going to deconstruct a, a um, burner 
a propane burner to make a trivet for this big Dutch oven. And I had it all kind of planned out, but I don't want to destroy the burner that I'm using for it. So he wants me to bring one of mine over. Well, <laughs> I, I asked if you had one that was available because you don't cook on them. So I asked nicely. And I did have extra ones. And, and I knew he had some extra ones, but if he didn't want to part with them, that's fine. I would have went and got the other one. But anyway, so the idea was to cut this the legs down on this uh, one of those propane burners, the, the jet burner. And then that way this would sit on top of it nice and good. And then we could run coals underneath real easy. And yeah, remove the burner so we could have an open spot to put coals under. Yep. And then that was that was the, the, the grand plan. And uh, so he coming back and he he brought me a different burner that we're gonna play around with. And uh, you know, if I'm a good YouTuber, I'll show that. This was another fail. Yeah, right after we grinded off what I did bring. After it's done, I'm like, you know, I should have videoed you doing that. Yeah. So, on y'all, I'll let you tell them because it's your your thing. But I had a uh, my big 12 foot pull behind smoker. I had a cylindrical iron holder, only thing I can describe it as where I could take a regular 20 pound tank and stick it in there and it would hold that you know it was a perfect ring around for a 20 pound propane tank and I was going to weld the the three feet to it to the front tongue of my trailer just so it would hold my tank I could pick it up whenever I attached my weed burner to it to go to the back to light the fire well I sold my smoker last week and then I still had the propane tank holder which I never used I never welded it down and then I'm started you know, thinking about you know what he was you know, going through his mind, his idea, and I'm like, well, you know, we could probably use this and not have to destroy you know a, an actual burner. So I brought it up and a burner up yesterday, and looked at it, and it's like it made two perfect trivets: one a small, a shorter one, about four inches, three inches, three inch tall, and then one that's was it five or six? It's eight. It's eight. Yeah. Wow. So uh, to get it to where I was initially wanting it to, I would have to cut two inches off of it. But I think as long as we're using the bottom heat as like baking, I think it'll be fine. But got out there with the grinder and cut it all up and actually have two of them now. And one sits lower and one sits higher. It's perfect for heat distribution. Um, a perfect place to take Sorry. the lid off of this and, and yeah. set the lid down without setting it in the dirt. But uh, and before anybody asked, no, my wife was not home, so I was able to use the angle grinder without getting yelled at. <laughs> Why? Because you know, <laughs> mental stuff. But uh, it came out perfect yeah, it was for, for a piece of trash that I was actually going to end up probably hauling off to the dump because I didn't need it anymore because I sold my smoker. I probably would have just hauled it off. Yep, but so, it didn't work out perfect. So the idea was. We were going to use that and cook our breakfast on that. But I got up late this morning because I was up late last night. And I'm still dumbfounded about the whole brick thing. Um, so anyway. Um, and I see Nolan did not make macaroni noodles. Love she didn't make her roux. Well, make one, we, one, we didn't have the stuff for it because yeah, we didn't go to the store last night. Because the store closed by the time we... When we got in the car, it was 10.58, and everything closed us around here at 11. Right. So. So, didn't quite happen like that. But it's okay. So, that is on the list. Um, but anyway. Um, Mike said, is there a 100-year-old egg farm? I can hear it now 100 years ago, an egg farmer. Shot his son down and said, "One day your grandchildren will be make the farmer prof turn a profit." Let me get. You didn't grab my funnel. <laughs> okay. No wait, the funnel's down here. Yeah. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. Because I was like, I didn't see the funnel in there, so I just. Yeah. Is um the good? Oh, you need the 
blue. Anyway. Um, Pickle said only takes a few weeks to make a century egg. Not sure where the name came from. Um, Could be open it up and it's black and yucky. It looks like it's a hundred years old. Charlie, I am happy camper these days. I found a real butcher shop nearby and they sell tri tips. Oh, Sweet! Nice. Yes. I just bought one from Kroger at a couple days ago. My Kroger never has them. If they do, they always cut them in two sticks. Yeah, Food Lion has them every once in a while. and I've, I've never seen a, a fresh one. They're always pre packaged and pre marinated. Yeah. And But I pick them up whenever the I see them. The butcher shop has some. I'm not shopping at a butcher shop. I can't afford a hundred dollars for a slice of meat. Well, I'm <laughs> just saying the butcher got it. Yeah, I mean, if you can go talk about Glad Tiffany. I went. I went to the one um, stand. She's the owner of the butcher shop. Because y'all can y'all can see this, right? Yes, sir. Do you want me to zoom in on it? Huh? Uh, Set this right here. No, no, no. Now, this could be a train wreck. I thought I could zoom in on that one. Yeah. I guess I can. This, this could be bad. Oh. Hot bacon grease out of a newly seasoned Dutch oven. 50 pound hunk of iron. Yeah, this, this could be bad. Oh. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, I can't get it all in there. Ooh, gotta let that drain a little bit. I should have used a new, a new one. Oh well, that left <laughs> a little bit of, a little bit in there. Tom said he needed to move to Colorado. I don't want to move. You don't. I don't. I really don't. Give me a paper towel. Is, just, is that because you just have a lot of stuff or the memories? No, I just don't want the hassle of moving again. If I don't have to. And yeah, watch that, make sure she doesn't float. I think I did her a little too much there. Tom so paid nine jar. dead. Tom paid twenty dollars a pound. Yeah, that's about right. This other person said $5 a pound. See, so down here at Food Line, it's between 4 and $5 a pound. But again, it's this pre-packaged, pre-marinated ones. Yeah. <sighs> You're not going to lift that up out of there. Why? Because it will go everywhere. Really? Yes. I'm a, I figured it would drip a little bit here, going from jar to jar. No, because this, the filter... It'll, you're going to relieve the pressure and it's going to go everywhere. See the air bubbles? It's slowly going. See, it's rolling down the outside now. I don't buy cream. Maybe, maybe need. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I do this. I know what I'm doing. I do this. I know what I'm doing. Candied bacon. Let me let me let me let me, let me, let me let me remind her. Oh yeah, rescue effed up the candied bacon. No, I didn't. Look at your buddy. I ain't never messed up candied bacon. How did I mess up the bacon? Remember you said it wasn't cooked right? And then we threw it back on there and we had to throw half of it away. Right? Uh, yeah. We just talked about that the other day. We talked about cooking it at the competition. Yeah. But I don't remember it messing any up. Yeah. Because you were, because you told me that this isn't cooked long enough because it was still rubbery. Mm -hmm. He said that ain't cooked long, long enough. Cook it longer. And I said it won't because it'll caramelize. He said, no, throw it back on there. And we threw half the batch on there, back on the cooker. And we let it go. And then it never crisped up like you were wanting it to. And then it was burnt tasting, so we had to throw it away. I do not remember that. It was. I remember 
It was at the it was at the, the, the competition. Yeah. And I had spent like a day and a half cooking candy bacon. And all we had to do was just basically just serve it. There was the picture of me serving the candy bacon to the public. Yeah, I remember that very well. Yeah. And you were like, No, that's not right. And I was like, I make this and I was selling it at the time, and you're like, No, this isn't right. Candy bacon's supposed yeah, to be crispy. And I was like, it won't, it won't crisp up. And you were hell bent on, no, it's got to be crispy. I said, it won't crisp up. You'll end up burning it. And then it ended up burning because the sugar's in it. And we had to throw it away because it was burnt paper. Hmm. I do not remember that. But I remember we went through a whole bunch of bacon that year. Yeah. yeah. Out of the 35 pounds, that we, we had to throw half of it away because it was... Burnt. And it never, and you were like, well, I thought it would crisp up. And I said, I told you it won't. It won't crisp up like regular bacon once you get that coating on there. And you got to, you can only cook it so long. And I had it down to like a, a science 55 minutes, two wraps, and how to you flip it halfway. In 25 minutes, you had to flip it and rotate the racks and 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 that was like no that's 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 not candy bacon and i was like yes it is it's my barbecue bacon no i wish we had more Do you remember that i i love the candy bacon yeah, i remember it was really good I, do you remember us having to throw half of it away yes because i looked because and then instead of giving away half a piece we had to give away third pieces just so we had enough to, to hand out yeah i do not remember going through and, and having burning bacon and having to throw it because I was like, I'm not. I said, You you are hell bent on this between you the two it, old men, they and, almost have to and you put it on. And I said, Don't let it go too long. Oh, I won't. I won't. And I said, I'm not, I'm not fooling with it. And it was on for two and a half hours, still smoking. And I was like, Are you gonna check that or what? And you're like, Oh. Yeah, I forgot. I was like, because it was done when I when I, when I when I brought it. I don't remember that at all. Well, yeah. that's also not surprising because you also had to run to the store that morning to get stuff for the beans. That was turning in in an hour. Yep, that that yeah. Or two hours. It was. You got up first thing in the morning. We were making coffee, and you're like, "Oh, I got to run to the store. I didn't get this for the beans." And I was like, are you serious? Because we talked about it, and you're like, I'm in and out of grocery stores all, all week long. I'll grab everything for the beans. And you didn't grab the two things we needed for the beans. You don't remember that either? No. But how you many left, years ago was that? You left with a fella that was camped beside us to go get... I do remember that. To go get stuff in the morning, and I was like, I'm ready to put beans because on. Because he needed something, too. I needed to put beans on the pit, and you were like, and this was your, your deal. And you were like, yeah, well, I'm going to do the beans, and we're going to do my recipe. And I was like, all right, get everything. And you didn't have what you needed that you told me the week prior. I think I was going to get I had to go get the uh, crushed pineapple because I forgot the pineapple. Oh, I, I, I'll say I was hot. I was like, are you? That was so serious? mad. I was like, are you effing serious? And I think I cussed you the whole time you were gone. <laughs> because yep. we done screwed up the candy bacon the night before. And because there was a guy across the way that had candy bacon. And he came up. He said, I hear you got candy bacon. And he goes, that's what I'm doing. He was doing it the way you were thinking with the maple syrup and doing it that way. Grilling it off with maple syrup on it. And I was like, that's not what I'm doing. My way was completely different, right? And you were you were expecting what he had, crispy with maple syrup, like sweet maple syrup praline style, and and I had basically rub, barbecue rubbed bacon. And yeah, I was so mad that day. But hey, we did it. We did pretty good that time. Huh? I mean, I think we did. But yeah, I was so mad that day because, because yeah, we right. had thrown away so much bacon, and because I was making it, I mean, I made a couple hundred, you know, hundreds of dollars on that bacon. I mean, I was selling thirty-five pounds of it every other week. Yeah. 
I, but see, I can tell you, it was so funny. Once you left and you were out of dad's sight, dad looked at me and goes, Oh, no, 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 no. Are you sure? Yeah. Dad it's... looks at me and goes, don't tell him any of this. <laughs> and then as he's walking around the tent, like our tent, he's just cussing left and right, up and down. And it's because. So mad. It's because, like, when we go to do this. I mean, I start prepping weeks ahead of time, making sure everything's where it needs to be, making sure we have everything. And you do all of the checklists. Yes. And so making sure and I'm making, these have what they need. To I'm have. making sure everything's in the totes that we got to have. And, okay. and the one thing I was like, you want to do your beans? Do your beans. We'll, we'll put them on the pit. We'll smoke them up. That'll be good entry. Because the beans were an, an, uh, uh, an ancillary. Uh, we had to do that, and and he was like, "Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that." You, and then we're there the morning of putting stuff in the pot. Oh, I don't have this. I was like, "Are you serious?" Yep, I got to go to the store, dude. They're about to go on the pit. Yep, I don't have. I don't have. I'm, we're not. We're not turning them in without it. What? Yeah. Oh yeah, that, that day I was I was I was fired up that day. Um why Mike, I'm remembering as well as I am now, I don't know. But Mike yeah. said, look at Lee flexing his mind. Tom said Lee's a typical man. He remembers all the times he did something right and forgets everything he did wrong <laughs> with which is most of which is most of most every man I screwed wrong, up. Which is most everything. Let me tell you, Tom. <laughs> You two are going to have to stop GoPros, strap GoPros to your head, and download your memories every night. That's why I have such a good memory, Tom. I do everything right. That'd be scary. I know we need camp. We need like marital counseling. Y'all both need marital counseling for each other. Maybe y'all best you just need a therapy. I don't know. But anyway, so yeah, so that that had happened. I mean, that was what 2018, 19, four or five years ago. Yeah. But we did. I mean, we didn't finish bad. And the the one guy, the promoter, come by and he was like, he goes, "You're calling this candy bacon?" And I said, "Yeah." He's like, "We need to call it like barbecue bacon because it's not candied at all. It was sweet." But it, it was a rub. It was my homemade rub in it that. It was so good, though. And, I mean, once you start eating it, you didn't stop at a pound. No. <laughs> you would have gained a lot. Uh, I mean, it was, it was good. It was like and it had just a little hint of smoke. And, <laughs> yeah, it was wonderful. Um, no. This came bacon. Both. But, yeah, the guys beside us, they had to go get stuff for their uh, – they had the big Dutch oven, and they were doing a cobbler. And they didn't have stuff for the cobbler. And then they didn't even get it finished. So, come you want to give me another coffee filter? Yes, sir. Because this is getting full. And I have the other funnel. I had the other funnel. Mike said he wanted to make bacon jam keto style. Ooh. This whole egg just exploded. One thing I noticed, these uh, fresh eggs, some of them are very, very watery. I don't know. I don't know, Bubba. I don't know what makes them watery, but this was like opening up a water balloon. Oh, shoot. So, keto bacon jam. What kind of sweetener would you use? A, uh... <clears throat> Cub, I'm going to need the other phone, the blue one. Is the blue one out here? I don't think so. I didn't see it down there. 
Yep, here it is. We could do family dinner tonight. Because I don't think we're going to do seeing pictures today. Oh, you're not? Guess not. Why? The lady has checked out. Oh. So. Well, we'll see. So that we could do uh, family dinner. We'll see because we got a group tonight. Tom said, did we ever say what he's actually making? I don't think I did. Did I? <laughs> I don't think you if did. you did, it was before I got here. No, you didn't. <laughs> Well, basically, we're just cooking in the Dutch oven just to season it, really. And I'm making a mess. Um, okay, okay. Oh, you're shaking everything. I know. That's the one thing you're not shaking. Stephen and Jack runs in. What's up, brother? I'm making a mess. Can you tell? Yeah. Mike said he was going to use keto maple syrup in the baking pan. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Keto maple syrup. What is keto? Pasta? Dad, what's keto? Keto, my dear, is a way of eating that is sugar free, low carb, so like no white starches, bread, basically very limited fruits, like only berries, um, uh, meats, so it's just really low carb cooking. certain nuts and what it does is uh don't laugh and what it does is it uh it helps your body burn the fat and then it throws throws it into what they call ketosis which is basically burning the fat and converting all the bad stuff into or the, the yeah the bad stuff into usable energy and a lot of people lose a lot of weight really fast, but it also has um, been proven to not only help with weight loss, but other health issues like blood pressure, um, cardio, um, different ailments. Uh, I, I, I just lost the word ailments. Does that make sense? It works really, really good for weight loss. Whenever I first started going on it, and I was doing it really religiously, I lost 45 pounds in, in the first four months. So my guy, um, Carnivore Kip, I, don't, I know, I don't know, I think we've talked about him, but anyway. Uh, the one that we sat in here and watched videos that was a, a really large man, and he lost a whole bunch of weight. Yeah, he's he just posted he's lost... 70 pounds now. And he's doing it because he was almost 500 and it, it through different, um, you know, tests and whatever, he's getting nervous about it, being around for his daughter. So, right. you know, we've all been there. Um, kind of there now. I'm like, eh, I don't know. But, uh, Get some of this. Oh, I, I should probably. Mm -hmm. So or I'm just going to fire up this lid. We're over time, but does it matter? You got eggs ready. So. Mm -hmm. What am I looking for? I, I just went brain. Reset. Hold on. So. So now we got the lid over here that we're going to cook on the lid. Let's see if I can fix this so you all can see that. There we go. So now we're going to cook on the lid. Turn this off. That'll be good. 
big one over here. You don't think we ought to move those, swap the lid for the pot? Would it be better for the camera? Probably. The pot is covered. Probably. Stephen Jacklin said, I see you're using the latest member of the cast iron collection. Yes, sir. I just turned that on, so this should be fine. Mm. Yep. Yep. <sighs> Whew. Boy, she's a heavy one. What's your name? What are you going to name this thing? My aunt asked me, what are we going to name it? And I said, I don't know. It's it's Rusty, so I should probably let him name it. Oh. And she said, well, if he doesn't, something about if he doesn't come get, if he doesn't take it home with him. I was like, well, <laughs> I said, it'll probably be here for two years. So I could go ahead and name it, but. I said, wait, what? Cooking on the lid? Yeah, buddy. Using it, turn it upside down, you can use it as a griddle top. So, because this thing is so big, it's 14 inches around. Hey, a minute, tape measure. It's on this side. So, this is the lid for it. The cooking, the inside is 15 and a quarter. So, you know, and it's kind of concave. So when you flip it over like this and it's concave, then it makes it like a discada type deal. So that's what I plan on doing with it. Or a, uh, you know how they, the discada, how they do like the plow disc. I've been wanting to get a hold of one of those, but uh, yeah. So dip it into our little bacon grease here and see what and it's just another way to season this up and that's kind of the whole point of this um video today was just to season get this i seasoned it and i just want to get the first cook out of the way and you know we always do something fatty daddy you gotta paint happy tree oh can, can you can you even see? oh you can yeah so here's our river <laughs> Here's the river. Okay. Let me get the river in. Okay, it goes right up there. And then we'll just put the little put a big happy sunning rock right there. You see that? Alright. Sunning rock. Oh, there we go. Now we're gonna make this water come down around the rock. There we go. Well, we need some some more trees. Go up this way. Let's give it some foliage. Is that what you're looking for, Cub? Yes. Some foliage. Tom said Lee is becoming the Picasso of cast iron. <laughs> Don't forget the happy little birds. Yeah, here we go. I don't remember. Mom and Dad watching Bob Ross every weekend. Ooh, look, look at that. We'll just go like this. Make it look like it's raining. I saw it on uh, Facebook. There was a movie coming in about Bob Ross that Owen Wilson, I think, was playing him. I don't know. I don't know. I hadn't seen that one. But there's a movie coming Scotty's in. Scotty's in. Scotty, what's going on, buddy? He started doing his... uh. His barbecue shed, building that, but then got a, got a bunch of snow again. Yep, yep. Am I boring you? No, I'm just trying to make sure I wasn't remembering something that wasn't that didn't exist. Honey, let me tell you what, bud. We just had a, 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 a disagreement about candy bacon in a competition. <laughs> Bob Ross movie trailer. Scott said I have two walls up. Yeah, two walls up? Sweet, man. Sweet. The name of the movie is Paint. Hey, yo, we're going to get demonetized. I know, right? Copyrighted.
Come on now. Turn my volume down. See? Yeah. Painting little trees just like you just did. He looks nothing like Bob Ross. Let me see. I don't think that's Owen Wilson. That's what it looked like. It, it is. It, it so, didn't look like right. the makeup is good on it. So now we're getting this heated up and we're going to do eggs. Now, I do my eggs different than Rusty and that's fine. That is what this is all about. Um, where did... Uh, <coughs> bless you. Bless you. Last time I said Bob Ross had black hair. Like brown hair, not long. I have a spice with it right here. Okay, so mm -mm. we're getting up to temp. So if you guys don't know, the way you judge your temp is if you can hold it over over for five seconds and you're not warm enough. Um, for eggs, it'll be fine because you want it's that kind of low medium heat um i don't really go by that like how hot it is you know i don't want it too hot so i'm going to cut this down but i like to have it hot first so you get kind of that uh so it starts cooking as soon as you put it on there and then you can go a little bit thicker and then you can make your omelet or whatever can you say that i guess so um mike said i've been eating mine i gotta get mine to get the moan Huh? I gotta get mine to get demoned. It says I gotta get moaned to get demoned. Oh yes, get monetized to get demonetized. Oh. So what's interesting, Mike, is that I was <laughs> there's this one fellow I watch. He's <laughs> up in Canada and he does um, van life, and it's it's pretty interesting. I mean, I enjoy it just because he's really relatable, and he does a vlog, and he's on every day. I mean, he's he uploads five days a week. Oh wow, it's crazy. That's but this is. His, this is his job. That's his main job, and he's got some other stuff affiliated with it. But he uploads five days a week, and I keep going, man. I don't know that editing would just tear me up. But uh, when you're alive. You don't have to edit. <laughs> well, and he does. He does a lot of like. Well, he edits because he does his vlog, and then he cuts out pieces, and then he adds in like the drone shots or. Um, okay. You know, I added music and stuff like that. Well, he's also a DJ part-time DJ. So he was doing a 12 hour live stream for a little jump box power bank system. And um, so he was doing a 12 hour live stream showing how he can, how much stuff he can run with it and all this stuff. And anyway, he started playing some of his DJ stuff and got demonetized. He got four copyright strikes because the music clips yep yep so yeah and then like tom tom was saying the other day that uh that he got so you can add music through the youtube music add it there and it's free but then that's only for a certain amount of time and then you get hit with you need to pay us for that music or you're getting demonetized hmm. or that video gets demonetized so so what if like you okay let, let's say that like you made your own music and you put your own music in there would you get demonetized against your dick yourself not if it's yours there was tom was saying that he had somebody where tom had, had laid down this he was doing the drums and it was his own creation like he just started playing it one day and somebody reported him as a copyright strike from russia so he emailed the guy and said, hey, if it's yours, let me see your sheet music and I'll tell you whether or not it is. Never got any, not, not a response back. And then, so then it's like, well, now it won't be showed in Russia. He's like, okay. Man, that's a huge audience too. <laughs> it might be. I mean, I don't know how many Russians are into keto, but. I use Toon Tank for my music. That's a, that was from Scott. All you got to do is throw a couple headshots of David Hasselhoff in there. Scotty also, <clears throat> Scotty also said he loves the setup. Oh, you like the setup? You, do you like the new camera angle? Did anybody ever say? 
Okay. Um, so. Scotty's the real one. He says something. Hear that sizzle. Yeah. Yeah. See, I like to go slow, pour it slow. I kind of just want to show how versatile these, these ovens can be, you know? What, what seasoning are we going to put on there? Uh, South Texas Reds right behind me. The hatch I remember Chef Johnny getting got. I remember Chef Johnny got permission from a singer friend of his to use his music. Later, he got hit for strike from the managing company handling the guy's music. Yeah. Pull a little South Texas red up on there. Uncle Steve, shout out. So, yeah. Now, this is just what I like to do, but, you know, I'll kind of come and pop this and see if I can't move the liquid around so it all cooks even. There we go. What do you think of that? Looks good. You think you'll be able to eat that? Oh, I know I can. I don't know if I eat the whole thing, but there's some cheese on there. Yeah, I didn't grab the cheese. But what I will do is... See, now we're kind of... If you, if you tap it, you kind of see it setting up a bit. Oh, I see it. I'm looking. You need to get that shit in like neon. Set in there. Set this in. And no, I don't really have a rhyme or reason on what I'm doing here, so. Throw some bacon in here. So it won't go down easy if it ain't cheesy. Yeah, I guess. Watch. I, I know you. It's, 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 it's cheese and Pete's bull in a china shop. Just adding some American, shredded American. Well, that's the uh, It wasn't thick enough. So bacon Probably has a... Probably because of the concaveness and most of the liquid rolled down so it's thicker in the center than on the edges. What? What? Reagan has a superpower that we found out yesterday. Where's my super suit? Oh, oh, she has a superpower. Yeah. Reagan said, when I scream at red lights, I'll be like, go! And it'll change the green. <laughs> I didn't know that because I don't scream a lot and now my throat hurts, but Megan has the power to turn red lights into green lights by her screen. Hmm. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what frequency is that? Um, at least dog whistle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were riding with James and I said, Megan, this light. She goes, I got it. 
screamed, light turned green, and James is like, I'm sorry, what the heck just happened? Why are you screaming? She goes, I kind of like green. So now every time we had a red light, she's going to scream, and the light turns green. <laughs> but it is worth it. Mike said, over here, so Mike, I was just thinking of the same thing, but there's some tears. There we go. Got one done. Got one done. It's still on this. Okay. Sorry about that. We need to grease it again. That's what I'm getting ready to do. You got to make happy cheese. Well, it won't show up now. It could. You missed it. But this is, that's the, the thing with, with cooking eggs in cast iron. You know, you, I watch these TikTok videos and all that stuff, and people are going crazy over, well, it's not a season, right? This is a rough iron. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not joking at all. You know, that, that anybody that knows says, the cast iron has to be polished and, and dead smooth uh, before you can get anything to come out clean. Like, you can't cook eggs in a rough iron. I'm telling you, this came straight from China, sat in his cupboard for five years. Yeah, five years. We literally, the only thing I did was burn it off, seasoned it, and that's it. And we started cooking that today. That was bare, I mean, rough iron. Rough iron. I mean, you hear that? <laughs> I heard that. <clears throat> so, I mean, you, you can make eggs. And the trick is hot iron, cold oil, and then put your eggs in. And I like to go slow. For, for my omelet, I like to go slow. That's it. And then you season it and you go. Now I like to move it around. I do this on my, my flat griddle that I make eggs in all the time. And that's the way I do it on my actual on my omelet skillet. I have just for doing omelets. The only eggs. thing that I do different than you is I always flip my eggs. And you just put everything there. That's the only thing that I do different. I think that's yep. just because that's the way I was taught by my mom and dad from the time I was like six years old when I started cooking. Yep. And that's just but, the way I was taught. But it works just as good this way. But And I do it in, I mean, my mom taught me how to make eggs. And I can't tell you this is how she did it. But I know we did not, <laughs> I know we did not have cast iron. So I've had to adopt and learn, Enough. adapt, sorry, and learn how to do it. I'm sitting liking, I'm like, I'm liking the shiny, the skinny walk, walk, walk. Walk, yep. Walk. It, very, I mean, very shallow walk. And I mean, we can do any kind of stir fry or a lot of leg lamb, got a leg of lamb going in soon from Scotty. Oh. Yeah, that's one good thing about. Bye, Scotty. It. Bye, Scotty. Have a good one, buddy. Food lion down the road. They always have lamb, and they always have it marked down. Yeah, I'm guessing it doesn't sell very good, and so every two days they have all their lamb chops and Do small like rib lamb? racks and stuff all marked. Yeah, down. we got it the one time, and you were like, "Oh yeah, this is great." I want pork chops and applesauce again. That was good. Don't pork give me chop? a side eye. Yeah. Pork chops and applesauce. That's the only way I like eating pork chops. I get applesauce. Throw, throw a sausage in here. But I kind of want to just show that, like, 
even though you've got a rough cast iron, you can still cook some wonderful stuff. And this will. Was, oh, if you were going to show the stuff, we couldn't see it. Sorry. It was halfway in. Sorry. But, you know, just to show that this will, as we use it more, it will smooth out. And that's all it, it, That's all I want to show. I know. love lamp, and it is never on sale here. Every now and then I can find it at Aldi for a pretty good price. That is was it, fun. For my yeah. Is this a food line every day? Pork chops with applesauce is good. That was from Steven and Jackson. Yeah, oh, fine. yeah. Well, there's stuff like that. And it is thinner because the the concaveness and it's really thick down in here. So it's okay. Glad you made this look like a burrito. Huh? You made it look like a burrito. That's I've been like working because we went to the um the bre new breakfast spot. And I'm like, oh, I like how they do the burritos. Or they're not the burritos, they're uh, omelets. And so I've been working on trying to get them to fold right. Why are they at? I'm going to try to. Oh, door open, but it's okay. As you see, though, no sticking. Hot iron. It, it's all temp control. I'm on low. I'm, I'm, this is as low as that burner goes. My love of lamb comes from my Australian lamb. Ooh. I've not tried lamb. No, no I'll take it back. I've tried lamb. lamb. I've, I've cooked it a couple times, but I was thinking camel. I haven't tried camel. Why Why I went to camel, I don't know. Why would you try it? Camel. Camel, lamb. It's the same, it's the right? Lamb. No. Yeah. Camel... If it has three humps, it's pregnant. If it has I mean, the only, it's the only, I take it back. I have tried camel. What? It was camel lights and camel wides. So the cigarettes. Well, my dad had camel non filters. <laughs> 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 yeah, because we used to get camel cash. Right here, yeah, over here, like that. what? Mom and dad, because mama smoked um, camel filters and dad was camel non filters. Roll this in there like so. Put that right on top. What do you think of that? What y'all think of that? Once I put salsa and the cheese on it, you'll never know. The new KFC Kawadi Fried Camel. <laughs> that was from Mike. I couldn't say that first word. There. You go up. There we go. No, oh, no. no. Whoa, 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 yeah. whoa. Yeah. I cannot. There it is. All right. Now, that's all. Do we want more eggs? You guys don't want eggs. So, all right. I'll split this with Mama. And uh, that's all we got. Bacon grease drain. See, I knew what I was doing. <laughs> You gotta trust me more, man. I trust it. I just—I mean, I'm, I'm trying to move it over there. I know, I don't, and that would have made a huge mess because one, once it, once you pour your hot liquid in here,
you can't even tell. I'll put some salsa so on when I get inside. But... So, so, oh, he's at the very heavy buttons. Where's the reverb coming from? Yeah, you got to put the main camera back on. There. Yeah, I realize that now. Yep, there you go. Thank there you. you go, Mike. There's more cheese. But all right, so um, where was that? So yeah, so the the bacon grease. So that's that's why that worked. Yeah. <laughs> So I just got to clean up the, the mess there and we're good to go. Um, we're already live. Uh, so anyway, we're going to get out of here. Um, man, I don't even know. I don't even have any planes this week or anything. I don't know. You're getting close. Now don't forget the salt. <laughs> So I, I always laugh when I watch Mike. And, and so and the, the part with Mike is his wife really likes salt. And I know your our bodies need a lot of salt. And I don't season enough with plain salt. But he grabs the, the container, like the big the big jug. I mean, well, it's a, it's a big jug. Like the pretzel pe or, uh, peanut butter pretzels come in. Right. He grabs that jug and he grab puts his hand in there and, and I mean he's only got a pinch, you know maybe a half a tablespoon, but because of his his hand goes in and he's grabbing it and then he's sprinkling on top. It looks like a lot. It looks like a snow globe when he's sprinkling it on there. <laughs> I, I laugh every time. But uh, Stephen Jackson said, "See y'all and stay stay beautiful people. Rock on. Rock on, brother. All right, so let's get out of here. Let's." Dinner's getting cold. Uh, Dinner's so, getting cold. Breakfast. So we'll get out of here. We've been on for an hour and a half. So hopefully it's not been too boring. I don't think we've destroyed anything. Nope. And oh, and I gotta say, somebody last week when we said don't tell my wife. Yeah, my wife come home. She said, "Oh, so you season cast iron on the burner out in the garage?" And I said, "Who the hell told you?" And I started naming off some some suspicious people that, that that would do that to me. Now, now, somebody I didn't even know was watching texted her and said, "You might want to flip on YouTube right now because your husband's smoking up the whole house." Which he was. Like, and I mean, we probably shouldn't have done it. We had the garage door open. Yes, we opened it more and more. And we and had more. a fan blowing. Yeah, so I mean, it was. But it did it like. It was semi safe. Party. It was semi safe, but semi it was okay. So anyway, somebody did rat me out, and I confronted that person. We were later. two adults supervising the whole town. There was there was nothing. I don't wrong. think they, both of you together count as one adult. The, <laughs> only, the only thing I can say is I was unsupervised. I was supervising you. You were supervising me. You were yeah. supervising. But, but if he but was sitting on the to, right side, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was on my left side. According to my wife, I was unsupervised. <laughs> so anyway, let's get out of here. Uh, just remember there's two rules of cooking. Did, did you have, have fun? Did it taste good? <laughs> Rock on. Y'all are awesome. Have a great week. And you know, like I say on the podcast, buy somebody a cup of coffee and ask them how their day's going. Have a great week, guys. Have a great week.